Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the podcast and the channel. Today, I'm going to be breaking down the divisional round, and really not a breakdown, but a first look at it. The salaries came out earlier today. They came out really bright and early in the morning instead of like one o'clock in the afternoon, so I'm able to get this video out right away early for all of you. I'll also have a PGA first look out today as well as already an NBA video up. So we're going to go position by position like we usually do. Just take a first look. I think my initial thoughts is that DraftKings really priced everything up and there's not a lot of value and the value that's on the slate isn't great so trying to pay up for maybe one of these top end quarterbacks this week is really going to limit what you can do at running back and wide receiver and vice versa for the other position so it's going to be difficult to build a lineup that you might like as a pair as compared to last week where there's a lot of five and six k value players and in, in both running back wide receiver and definitely tight end below 4k even that i thought were strong plays this week i'm really struggling to find that at least on my first look on monday i'll have a thursday final thoughts video and just like last week i'll be breaking down both showdown slates and the sunday two game slate so be sure to tune back into the podcast if you listen there how those ears doing but also on the video version right here on youtube later in the week also i do have exclusive content i will have an ownership show for this nfl slate projections game by game notes final thoughts with my exposures and a lot more stuff over on patreon not only do you get access to that you get access to my pga exclusive content and nba which is daily projections for the nba and interest pools so you can check that out linked up down below social medias are also down there and lastly this video is sponsored by drafters.com it's an online snake draft format i will put a link down below to a an old tweet of mine i can't put um fantasy sports sites anymore linked up in the description with the dot com on it because then I will end up actually getting my account suspended like many other people in the industry have or even canceled from YouTube. It's some new terms of service with their bots, but I'll put a link down there to drafters. You can check it out. I'm going to set up a listener league today. So later today, you can also get that link uh, and I'll, dry, I'll drop that down below to the listener league. I'll make it like eight to 10 people. So be sure to get in there. If it fills, I'll add another one. You can use the promo code SAL100, lets them know you came from me, but also allows you to get a 100% deposit bonus. So if you put 10, $20 in, you'll get a match of 10 to $20, 100% just for using the code SAL100, that is SAL100, drafters.com. It is an online snake draft format. Very cool. And there's no more draft.com. And this is the thing that I imagine is going to take its place. So check that out. Let's get into it. Hit the subscribe button. The goal is to hit 20,000 before the Super Bowl. We're very close. Really appreciate your support. Starting with quarterback, Deshaun Watson, based on his price point, based on his skill set and matchup, right now, early in the week, seems to be a clear cut yes for me. But again, this is my initial thoughts because one salary and then just relative to the other players on the slate. So Deshaun Watson, KC ranks 29th in pressure. That is extremely beneficial for a mobile quarterback who's averaging over 25 yards per game on the ground. A guy who somehow did not go down and getting just destroyed and clobbered at the end of that game as he throws the, uh, the check down to Taiwan Jones to end up setting up the game winning field goal in overtime versus Buffalo. Casey has improved in really all facets on its defense um, outside of pass rush. They've improved, and that's because of some injuries midseason to late season, but they've improved in coverage. They still rank 19th, but Chadavius uh, Ward has been very good. Their problem is they're just slot cornerback for the most part, and then also their second cornerback on the outside. Um, they've improved definitely in the running game as compared to, as compared to late the last month of the season, but it's still a really good spot for Watson here. The team total is concerning at 20 coming in on the road here, but a lot of these totals, if you're the underdog, it's a, it's a couple of really big spreads if not all of these on the slate so the favorites have great team totals the underdogs don't i really like deshaun watson if you ever get him trailing in games that's where he's a lot more effective highest paced game i enjoy the spot for the price tag at 6700 and that's a big reason why the price tag is 6700 it's affordable Lamar Jackson and Patrick Mahomes, yeah, I'm going to have interest, but here's the thing. You want to pay for Lamar Jackson? Okay, well, you just gave up a top-end wide receiver. You just gave up a top-end running back, right? It's a $1,700 difference between Deshaun Watson and Lamar, and I agree. Lamar is going to project out as the highest projection on the slate. I mean, he averaged 29.4 fantasy points per game during the regular season. He has a tied for the highest team total with Mahomes at 29 on this one, 10-point favorites at home. It is the slowest pace game. Tennessee is the most similar team left in the playoffs, and maybe, maybe the entire league to Baltimore on offense in terms of just running the ball 30 plus times and milking the clock. So it seems like both of these teams are going to probably lose a possession in this game. Love Lamar, but he's 8,400. He's $900 more than the next closest guy. That $1,700 difference, you can have Deshaun Watson and say Devontae Adams this week, or you can be down to the 6K range at wide receiver with Lamar. I'd rather have Devontae Adams and Deshaun Watson, in my opinion. Right now, Lamar's a maybe, but he's probably leaning closer to a no just because of price for me. I get it. Uh, Tennessee is good versus the run. They're good in tackling, which is very key for stopping a mobile quarterback. Nobody's been able to do it. I'm not saying anybody will, but even if Lamar scores 25 points at this price tag, I don't think he's needed. 
Patrick Mahomes at 7,500. Similar analysis. He's obviously cheaper, but he's still $800 more than Watson. You're going to get a matchup against Houston that ranks 24th in coverage. Jonathan Joseph missed last week. We'll track that injury. Bradley Roby played, almost had a pick six in that game, and he looked fine. So that doesn't help Mahomes. But I just prefer Watson's rushing upside. I prefer the fact that Watson's playing from behind where historically his splits are better. Um, and Mahomes at 7,500 is still expensive. It's still an $800 difference, which again is still one of those Tyree kills, uh, DeAndre Hopkins. Devontae Adams type of players into your lineups, or you can go to the running back position with Dalvin Cook, Aaron Jones, and then you're dropping off a huge drop off to the next tier of wide receiver and running back that you have to choose from. And the drop off between Deshaun Watson and Patrick Mahomes at the quarterback position is not that much. I mean, Deshaun Watson averaged a fantasy point more per game this season than Patrick Mahomes. This is not Patrick Mahomes from last season. Yes, it's a good matchup for him at home with a 29 implied team total, and I like that, but he's not 6,700. If he was, I would have just as much interest in Mahomes. But I do think that Deshaun Watson and Patrick Mahomes in this matchup will grade out for very similar points, if not Watson even more as an underdog forced to throw. So again, I do pre- prefer Watson to Jackson and Lamar or to Jackson and Mahomes early in the week. Then this next tier of 6K uh, quarterbacks not named Deshaun Watson is Russell Wilson at 6,600 and Aaron Rodgers at 6,500. They're playing each other last game of the weekend, 640 start, I believe, in Green Bay, where Green Bay starts out as four-point favorites, 25 implied team total to Russell Wilson and Seattle's 21 implied team total, barely getting by Josh McCown. And I mean, it seemed controlled the whole time, but it came down to the last drive of the game, 17-9, to barely getting by a Josh McCown for three quarters led by with Carson Wentz leaving with a concussion. Um, So sad for Wentz every single time that his team has a playoff run, he ends up getting hurt right before it. Never going to get to see that guy. I really show what he can do. But Russell Wilson, uh, major concerns for his protection here. Green Bay ranks fourth in pressure. Zadarius Smith was snubbed from the Pro Bowl. The next game, he goes for three and a half three and a half sacks and like six tackles for a loss. He just got a snub from all pro, a guy with 13 and a half tackles, led the league in pressure rate. Um, Just unreal. He gets snubbed. He said, uh, posted something on Twitter and Instagram that he's pretty pissed in, in pretty much translation. And he's worked his ass off and always been underrated. So we'll see what that happens. But yeah, I mean, Russell Wilson, his protection is ranked 30th in the league in pass protection. Now you're facing a top five pass rush that when the Packers blitz, they're number one in the league. So they're fourth overall and they barely blitz. When they blitz, they're number one in the league. That is very scary for Russell Wilson. At 6,600, his rushing upside keeps him in play. But again, $100 more. Deshaun Watson's a clear cut play there for me. Aaron Rodgers at 6,500. Green Bay ranks fourth in pass protection and and Seattle's rush pass rush is ranked 30th. So Aaron Rodgers is going to have all day to throw. You're going to have Devontae Adams in a positive matchup because Shaq Griffin only stays on the left side of the field. So just move Devontae Adams into the slot, move him to the right side of the field, and he should be able to eat up Trey Flowers in this one. Maybe you see some double coverages, but then just get Devontae into the slot. It's a fine spot. But again, Rodgers probably throws 30 or 32 times, four-point home favorite, nice implied team total. You're getting a $2,000 discount off of Lamar Jackson to Aaron Rodgers. Yes, I think Lamar Jackson can go for 30 to 35 and Rodgers can go for 15 to 20, and that's not great. But there's also a way where Rodgers goes for 20 to 25 and and Lamar goes for 25 to 30, and that $2,000 gets you a lot more. So that's why Aaron Rodgers is somewhat interesting. Seattle's uh, coverage ranks 15th. They're 28th in tackling. It's a fine matchup, but I'll keep resorting back to Deshaun Watson. He has $200 more for probably 20 to 30 more rushing yards per game upside compared to Aaron Rodgers, probably about 10 or so more than Russell Wilson per game upside in this matchup. Similar uh, spots indeed in terms of just the price points, but it's really hard not to like Watson um, when you're factoring in matchup, when you're factoring how the offense actually moves the ball as nine point underdogs. Jimmy G is really only interesting because of price, a uh, top five coverage because mainly of their strong zone defense from Minnesota. You saw that last week. Just look at what they did to Michael Thomas and Drew Brees. They were able to just zone those players out and, and coverage scheme them out. So it, you don't have that type of player with Debo Samuel and Emmanuel Sanders and George Kittle on San Fran. So it makes it easier for Jimmy G. He comes into this one as a seven point home favorite, though. Minnesota does have a good pass rush. They're getting healthier. He's not a priority. 5600 though, extremely cheap. You start comparing him now to guys like Mahomes and Jackson, and he's like $2,500 cheaper than these guys. Yeah, almost $3,000 cheaper. That's when it starts to come in. It's a salary play. I don't hate him. He has a 26 and a half team total. He's definitely in play for me. The guys that don't really care too much about Ryan Tannehill versus Baltimore's top five secondary since week six. They are ranked 28th in pressure rate though, so that's good. Play action passing can be there for Ryan Tannehill as it has been really all season long. And then Kirk Cousins versus the number one overall secondary is a terrifying spot for him and his wide receivers at 5,600. I'd rather just go to Jimmy G. So yeah, right now, Deshaun Watson kind of sits on an island of his own. I think that Lamar Jackson and Mahomes might even be like tier three options for me this week. I would probably have like the Russell Wilson's maybe Rodgers in tier two. I, I understand that they can score a lot of points. They'll be my highest projected quarterbacks are right around that. They're just so damn expensive. And I'm not shocked to see Deshaun Watson be just as highly projected as Patrick Mahomes for me this week for almost $1,000 cheaper. 
let's move on to running back be sure to check out drafters once again i'll have the link down below to the listener league get in there uh, there's only gonna be seven spots because i'll be in there and if it fills up just leave it let me know in the comments if you see that it's filled and you couldn't get in i'll reopen a new one and we'll be able to get that done on saturday last week we drafted saturday around like noon so be sure to get uh ready for that it's very fun it takes five to ten minutes to draft it's like a season-long draft except you do it very quickly and it's for that week a uh, ton of fun running backs dalvin cook look san fran is amazing in the secondary they have a strong defensive line in terms of pressure and good players in the defensive line i mean rookie of the year and probably defensive player of the year candidate nick bosa which is insane but they rank 12th around middle of the pack versus the run cook I, I like to see that he was healthy last week he looked dominating three catches for 36 yards on five targets as well in a game where they were i mean leading the entire time imagine now as seven point underdogs if they actually need to throw the ball it's as close to a neutral pace spot here um i like the fact that you saw five targets in a a spot you don't expect him to i think his upside of four and a half targets per game when he's trailing in this one jumps to like six or seven you're still going to get your 15 at minimum carries on the ground for a guy who's averaging close to 19 carries per game i like dalvin cook at eight thousand. again you have to pay for it but the tier at running back this week is insane last week you had a couple of options like the james whites the devin singletary's in that 6k range that made some sense especially singletary that had a lot of upside and you ended up getting that 19 fantasy points this week, maybe that's Damian Williams at the same price point. But after that, there's not much. You have Dalvin Cook at the top, then Aaron Jones at 7,400. Even with Jamal Williams practicing and trending towards playing, I think Aaron Jones at this price point is, is a great play. Green Bay is seventh in run blocking advantage. Seattle ranks middle of the pack, 14th in run defense, and they struggle against pass catching running backs. Aaron Jones, you saw him take on a workload of 25 carries. That's going to come down the last time out for 100 yards. Um, but his passing game role of four to five targets should sustain. Even Jamal Williams coming back probably sneaks in there for six to eight carries at most 10. You're still going to get Aaron Jones and I'll project him for a minimum of 16 touches, probably average around 18 touches in this one in a good matchup where he'll get usually all the red zone work. Derrick Henry is a yes for me. Usually don't see this for me. I do prefer Dalvin Cook and Aaron Jones to Derrick Henry this week, but look, Baltimore ranks 15th against the run, very similar to Seattle, middle of the pack. The only way they're winning this game against Baltimore secondary is if Derrick Henry does what he did last week and runs for 30 plus times and has a lot of success at a six plus or six yard per carry clip. So Derrick Henry right now is very close for Dalvin Cook for me. They're both going to project out for somewhere around like 18 to 20 fantasy points. Aaron Jones will probably project out for me in like the 16 to 17 point range. If I'm just having to guess, I'll be doing projections later today. You can get those once again over on Patreon linked up down below if you want to check them out. So that is a top tier running back. Dalvin Cook, Aaron Jones, and Henry. I think I think I like Aaron Jones the most when you factor in pricing. The second tier of running back is just, I mean, I think tier two just sits Damian Williams by himself, but McCoy should see more work. They've said all season and they've healthy scratched McCoy twice now and limited his workload as well during the season. They want to preserve him for the playoffs. So does that mean McCoy still sees his eight touches per game? Does it mean now he gets a spike to 12 and that would impact Damian Williams? I'm currently projecting Damian Williams for 12 carries and three receptions. 15 touches at $6,000 is enough for me to get there, especially with how explosive Damian Williams can be. And really, there's not a lot of other options on this slate just look at this now the pricing tier drops off um you have some other guys that i have no interest in right now but i'll talk about them in a second carlos side at 5k kansas city has been improving but they still rank 29th versus the run slight improvement uh, from when they were dead last a couple weeks ago Hyde is set for a standard 14 to 16 carries in an overtime game last week he had 16 carries and i believe one reception he averages 16 carries per game they are nine point underdogs in this one so that's concerning but he'll get all the goal line work he's not a strong play you're banking on a touchdown but he's like the only option left. And when you're start, starting to get to these cheap guys, Duke Johnson only saw six touches last week in a game where there was overtime in a game where they were trailing a ton, only three catches for 30 yards in a game where they're trailing so much. He averages about six to eight touches per game. Um, in a good week, you'll get eight to 10 out of him. It's hard to want to prioritize him even at 4,700 when last week was the best spot for it. Now he's going to project to be needed as a pass catching running back but I still can't project him for more than like eight to 10 touches. At 4,700, I think he's in play. Um, it's just really tough to trust that when Hyde continues to stay on the field the majority of the time. Jamal Williams at 4,600. I have a yellow on him because he is battling some sorts of injuries, but he's already practicing, trending towards playing, projecting him for 11 touches in this one. Um, I just think the Packers try to run the ball a lot like they have been all season. Rodgers only throwing about 32, 33 times per game. I think you see somewhere around 16 carries, two or three receptions for Aaron Jones. I think you see somewhere around eight, nine carries for Jamal Williams, and then you get a couple of receptions or at least targets. So $4,600 if I project him for 11 touches, it's fine in the slate. It's very similar to Duke Johnson's role. I'll probably project Duke Johnson for somewhere around eight and a half touches. He's $100 more. Right now, I think they're both in play. LaShawn McCoy is my last maybe. I just want to see news here. Um, I really do prefer Damian Williams, but I think McCoy can get somewhere around this 10 target touch range. I'm actually going to make him a no for now because Tar Darwin Thompson has been taking on more workload. I think that's because they've been trying to rest McCoy, but I want to read more into the news, read more into the analysis, and we'll get back to Thursday on McCoy. 
some of my no's the only other 6k option aside from Damian Williams and there's no other 7k option aside from Aaron Jones so a huge drop off is Mark Ingram he's 6700 yes he's going to get a lot of rushing opportunities but so is the whole team like Lamar's going to run 10 plus times Mark Ingram's only averaging 15 rushing attempts a game and I'm not going to try and play him and bank on his one reception touchdown like he's been having I don't know like three out of the last five games Uh, but this is a good rush defense Gus Edwards will get his eight to ten carries Justice Hill will get his two to four carries it's really hard to prioritize Mark Ingram in a slow paced game the slowest in the slate where Tennessee is top three in run defense and tackling um, and defensive line play so yeah it's an expensive price tag for 15 carries like you're getting Damian Williams who probably sees 15 total touches or similar total touches for $700 less and has a better passing game role for $700 more you're getting a guy in Aaron Jones who is more explosive better passing game and role and probably two to five more touches as a minimum hard to prioritize Ingram hard to prioritize where he most start like the guy's gonna get 12 to 12 12 to 14 touches that might lead the team but it's not by a wide margin like Tevin Coleman will have his five to seven Uh, Matt Breida will have his four to six it's not fantastic and that can flip easily if Matt Breida is playing well like 12 to 14 touches for 5800 same analysis Damian Williams will be in that same bucket I like his overall upside a little bit more than most starts Um, and I also like his matchup more same analysis can go for other guys in that pricing range like Carlos Hyde for a lot cheaper you're gonna get the exact same amount of touches touches um if not more touches for Hyde in a better matchup so most I think is a little bit overpriced and overrated to this point I get it a month ago Shanahan said oh he'll play more he's our guy he's he's seeing 50 percent of the touches instead of his normal 35 right Travis Homner did not have any upside last week Green Bay's rush defense has been a lot improved since Dean Lowry's gotten healthy so if you're still banking on the week five and six narratives where they got destroyed by like the Philadelphia Eagles and Jordan Howard that their rush defense is bad it's not fantastic it's not elite but since Dean Lowry and Kenny Clark getting healthier throughout the season but mainly Lowry's foot injury this rush defense has been very much improved and also if you're trying to bet on Travis Homner to or, or Homer um to be the guy who rips them back apart yeah I don't know too much about that um the guy is seems athletic in the pass catching game but not so much nimble between the tackles and then I'm not worried about Marshawn Lynch all that much moving over to wide receiver lots to break down more throughout the week with wide receiver and quarterback matchups but I really like the top end here and again the top end at running backs great then there's a drop off the top end wide receiver is great there's not as much of a drop off but the matchups are absolutely brutal for the mid-range so Devonta Adams at the top I think he's fantastic he's going to get to avoid Shaq Griffin because Griffin stays on the left side of the field and then he'll get to bully Trey Flowers all he wants maybe move into the slot and have a great matchup there Seattle struggling in the slot all year long Tyreek Hill at 7600 incredible GPP spot for a guy who can just take the top off of a defense we know that Houston's been injured and banged up. They put Deshaun Gibson, their safety on IR like a week and a half ago, their best safety probably. They didn't have Jonathan Joseph last week, who hasn't been great this year at cornerback, but again, you're filling in more depth in the playoffs. That's never good in your secondary. And now you have Patrick Mahomes with a 29 implied team total, fastest paced game, and Tyree Kill out there. Really good spot for Tyreek. I do prefer Devontae Adams right now, but I think both of them are in elite spots. DeAndre Hopkins, his matchup's tougher than it actually seems. If Will Fuller's out, there's going to be more attention on Hopkins, but there usually is. So you usually see more targets Fuller Hopkins way. He actually averages more fantasy points per game when Fuller's out. But you saw last week the recipe to sort of taking him away. It was a tougher matchup against Jadavius White, but KC might try and do that. Jadavius Ward has been very good over the second half of the season. If they put Ward in a safety on Hopkins and bracket him, it can be a tough day for Hopkins once again. So at 7,400, I think he's still in play, of course. I mean, Kansas City overall, their secondary is still ranked 19th. They're still going to have to pass the ball. I mean, Watson probably 40 plus times, still going to lead to 10 or 11 targets for Hopkins. So I put Hopkins behind Adams and probably behind Hill right now early in the week. I like both San Fran wide receivers against Minnesota, right? Nice team total, 26 and a half. The spread is is decent. It's like a seven point spread. So they might have not have to throw as much. And San Fran is very willing to just run the clock out. But Sanders at 54 and Debo at 52. I think if Will Fuller, depending on his status, is in or out, if he is out this range of 54 and 52 for the San Fran wide receivers, one of them, if not both, will have a very good day at those price tags. And on the lack of value on the slate, they both stand out in good spots. Now, Minnesota ranks third in coverage. And a lot of that is because of zone defense. But if Sanders is going to come out of the slot, that helps a little bit out. Alexander and the has been very good man to man so that's worrisome Debo on the outside against Xavier Rhodes we saw what they did last week to Michael Thomas just absolutely shut down based on Thomas's skill set when the zone defense was put into place so concerning spots for sure but if you get the quick passing game that San Fran likes to play with uh, in the red zone Debo has been very much targeted this year by um Jimmy Garoppolo the second half of the season these price tags are very favorable Will Fuller I have yellow on him because he missed last week the hamstring's been an issue all year the health's been an issue even if he's out there he might not play but at five thousand dollars hard not to like the guy um, if he does suit up and he is healthy so track that the second tier of options here that's sort of the third tier right that 5k range of Sanders Debo and Fuller I have interest in all of them because that's really where I'm finding my value on this slate I don't know where else you're getting it um, you're going to pay up at, water, at quarterback regardless they're all expensive this week running back you're almost forced to pay up wide receiver there's a lot of good options at the top that I want to get to some of them 
So where are you getting your value? I don't want to be playing Travis Homer for my value or Marshawn Lynch. I'd rather be playing guys like Debo Sanders, Will Fuller. Uh, DK Metcalf went off last week, had a ton of him. He was a yes yet last week for us on a short list of like three or four guys. He made the list as one of the yeses. Look, he's likely to see Kevin King in this one. The Packers put the more physically dominating, sometimes taller wide receiver with Kevin King because he's more taller and physically dominating than Jair Alexander. So it's a good matchup for Metcalf in that regard. So I think at 6,800, the price point's coming up. The pass rush for Green Bay can get to Wilson and cause problems. The secondary for Green Bay has been pretty above average. It's been close to top 10 this season. So Metcalf, price tag coming up, not as much interest as last week, but still some interest. Tyler Lockett, look, he seems to be the guy who's going to have a brutal time here. You have in the slot... Uh, Tremont Williams, who's been fantastic this year. When the Packers run out zone defenses, they're just destroying slot cornerback, slot wide receivers. And then Jair Alexander might travel with Tyler Lockett, definitely when he leaves the slot, but also into the slot in some plays. So 6,600, I prefer Metcalf once again. Now you get to the Minnesota guys, Diggs at only 5,600 and Thielen at only 62. Thielen was great last week. Diggs was getting shut down, had a catch in overtime, I think, to get him to like his second catch of the day. He had a rush attempt for like nine yards, but this is a brutal spot. San Fran's secondary ranked number one overall right there, pretty much tied with the Patriots as the season ended. But you have Richard Sherman, who's going to stay on the left side of the field the whole time. Who will get him is the main question here. The, um, the Vikings run a lot of two tight end sets, so Busy Johnson won't be on the field in the slot. Thielen sometimes will go into the slot, but on the outside, it'll be Witherspoon and it'll be Richard Sherman. When you're in the slot against Kwan Williams, that's not a good matchup anyways, and Thielen's more likely to go into the slot, so that's a negative. But who's going to get uh, who is going to get um, Richard Sherman on the outside? I don't know. I think it's going to be Steph Diggs, but he's a big play upside guy. We saw Thielen get that upside last week. Either way, it's a tough matchup. I think they might maybe rotate it as well. So whoever sees Sherman is in a brutal spot. I really don't want to play either of them. I think Diggs is cheaper because DraftKings is pricing this as if he's going to see Sherman, and that's just a terrible spot to be in but Witherspoon on the other side is top 15 top 12 I believe in pass rating against this season Quan Williams in the slot has been a top three if not I would say and I would argue the best slot cornerback in the entire league in man-to-man coverage so I don't know where I'm going right now with the Minnesota guys early in the week I just know that they're neither of them are in great spots AJ Brown not in a great spot either but he's priced down to 6k he has a brutal matchup against Marcus Peters and probably Marshawn uh Marlon Humphrey I think they'll move Humphrey out of the slot because why do they have to waste him on um Tajay Sharp or if Adam Humphreys comes back Adam Humphreys or if Khalif Raymond comes back Khalif Raymond right they're dealing with a lot of injuries in their slot wide receiver Tennessee but AJ Brown's now down to 6,000 uh it is a nice spot because Baltimore doesn't have any pass rush so Tannehill will have time to find Brown it's a risky play, but I think he'll be low on due to the matchup. Alan Lazard at 4,500. Don't get too tricked into this one. He is the Packers wide receiver too now, but he's likely to see Shaq Griffin, who was rated before his injury two weeks ago, the number five overall cornerback in pro football focus is database. So Alan Lazard, I'm a Packer fan. I think he is the Packers wide receiver too. He's looked good there. He's seen, I believe, somewhere close to 17 targets over the last two games, although Rodgers threw 55 times against Detroit in week 17, so a little bit inflated. Either way, Lazard at 4,500. It's a good price tag, but the matchup could be absolutely brutal against Shaq Griffin. I don't think they're going to be put, putting Devonte Adams on Griffin's side all that much. Hollywood Brown hasn't done much outside of two to three games this year. Week one, he had like a two touchdown game on a Thursday night football game where Lamar threw for five touchdowns. It's I think Lamar did that twice on primetime. It's a spot where he's 4,400. Really good matchup against Tennessee's 20th ranked uh pass coverage for 25th ranked pass rush and that's pretty much it i think he beats the ty smiths and the adore jacksons enough in this game to maybe have a big play at 4400 sammy Watkins, 4300 running out of the slot still against houston fine matchup i mean you probably see sammy getting six to eight targets probably more times than not if he doesn't score a touchdown finishes with 40 to 60 yards it's a good value like on a, on a slate where you're lacking value sammy Watkins at 4300 seems like a very secure value piece and then kendrick Bourne, 3700 uh, you're probably getting four to five targets here he has red zone upside 3700 dollars is the cheapest that i would look for a wide receiver as of right now this week Lastly, looking at the tight end position, I don't have any notes set for the tight end yet, but pretty much it's a short, it's a short slate. Look, you have two elite tight ends, Travis Kelsey and Kittle. And if you're talking about complete tight ends, uh, two of the best in the league in Kittle and Andrews. Kittle is by far the best tight end in the league when you factor in pass protection and run blocking. And then Mark Andrews, when you factor in run blocking and pass protection, is right up there maybe as number two. I, I know everybody likes Travis Kelsey because he has Mahomes as his quarterback, but he is atrocious at pass protection and run blocking nowhere near the levels of George Kittle, and honestly, not that much near Mark Andrews. But for fantasy purposes, these three guys are great. In their matchups, even better. Um, really hard not to prioritize Travis Kelsey and Kittle here. I mean, they're both so cheap at 64 and 6,200. They both, in my opinion, have strong matchups. Now, Kittle will have a tougher one against Anthony Harris, but I'm factoring in his skill set. I'm factoring in that he runs routes to the outside as well, so he won't see as much Anthony Harris. But Harris, you saw last week, sort of locked up uh, Jared Cook for the most part of that game. Cook got a lot of his on short underneath routes instead of his normal downfield routes. Harris also also came up with an interception when being targeted deep last week. So 
teams don't like to look his way but it's George Kittle he's a priority of this San Fran passing game I would project him for around eight targets even if you only have Jimmy G throwing for 30 times so Travis Kelsey Kittle a bar bar fine and a bar by far and away the best options here look they're just cheap um you i think there's not that many pay down spots if any on this slate at tight end andrews at 5600 good matchup against tennessee probably see six to eight to nine targets and it's fine for a pricing tier drop but I, this week i'm going to prioritize it as one kelsey two kittle three andrews the only other tight end I have interest in right now is Jacob Hollister. Didn't do much last week, but he just didn't have to. It was a weird game. It was a slow-paced game where Russell Wilson was running more than he usually does, right, on the ground. Uh, Jacob Hollister wasn't prioritized because DK Metcalf was having a huge touchdown play, and then after that, they ran the ball a little bit, and it was just a slow-paced game where there wasn't a ton of possessions. $4,000 is probably the cheapest I'd go. Green Bay has struggled immensely against tight ends this year terribly like absolutely brutal they can't cover a crossing route whether it's been Caden Smith from the Giants Greg Olson an old guy going out of his career on the downside of his career or all the elite tight ends this year have dominated them just look at it Travis Kelsey George Kittle Zach Ertz every single one of these guys has had a huge game Hunter Henry so Darren Waller all of them have gone off and had a huge game J- Jacob Hollister I think will have somewhat of a nice game I'm actually going to put him from a maybe to a yes if you're looking for value at tight end I'd stop at Hollister unless you get um once again this week uh, unless you get uh, jordan atkins out then you get some value in darren fells he is priced up to 3500 though so i think i would still prefer hollister in that range so short list of four tight ends right now early in the week i'll be back on thursday to uh, break down the rest of this slate in more depth more analysis of game by game notes and projections up tomorrow on patreon you can check those out linked up down below as well as my social medias and check out drafters.com i'll have a listener league posted down below you can use the promo code sal 100 sal 100 for a 100 percent deposit match you also get into that listener league so Thank you. I appreciate you tuning in. Have a great rest of your day. Best of luck this week. Thanks for tuning in, and I hope you enjoyed that video. Above my head, if you're not already subscribed to this channel, I do ask you if you can please hit that subscribe button. It helps me out a good amount to reach more people. You can also follow me on Twitter. That's over there. Right in the corner is my at SalVetriDFS Twitter. And then above, you'll find my Patreon link. You can click on that if you want more exclusive content for me. Or a video is going to pop up, so why don't you check that one out as well. I think it's going to be beneficial for you. Thank you so much again for tuning in, and I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day.